On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Aaron is going to give us a quick overview of GitHub Actions, which are new and they're an interesting way of doing CI/CD pipelines from within GitHub. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Aaron Powell. Hey, Aaron. Howdy, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming back on the show. And today, we're going to talk about GitHub Actions. That's right. This is cool. This is a, a new thing uh, recently introduced and, and something that I've wanted to do an episode on for a while, so this is great. Oh, I'm glad that I'm the perfect <laughs> candidate to perfect. show you just how to get started with it. So let's review at the highest level, what is a GitHub Action? So GitHub Actions is a, it's a CI CD process or a continuous integration, continuous delivery platform similar to you might have used with Azure Pipelines mm -hmm. or uh, other third parties such as Travis CI or Jenkins and things like that. Um, but this one is built directly into GitHub ah, so that okay. if you're working with GitHub already as part of your toolbox, we don't need to include another third party product, whether it's Azure Pipelines or something else, to do that CI CD process that we want. So this is kind of in line with the, the previous episode where we said that inside Visual Studio Code, you can do your source control, you can publish to Azure without having to change context and from all in your work environment. And so this is yep. kind of similar. You've got your code in GitHub. You could certainly go over to Azure DevOps and set up your CI CD pipeline, but now you're bouncing from there over to GitHub. GitHub Actions give the ability to do similar things in one place. Exactly. Cool. Um, there's also nice some advanced stuff. Yeah. 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 And there's some other advanced stuff that we could mm -hmm. do, such as tying into other events that might happen in GitHub. So if someone's okay. raising an issue or uh, working with pull requests, we can trigger off different things to happen, okay. not just you know, deploy straight through to production every right. time someone raises a bug. We sure. might not want to do that. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's so, see. Yeah. So um, to get, in, get started, uh, we'll see there's a new tab that's appearing in our GitHub. Um, Application or so this GitHub application uh, is the same one you built uh, on the previous episode. We'll have a link to that in the show notes if people yep. want to drill down into the awesome Trivia API app. Exactly. And if we click on this, we'll get presented with a bunch of uh, starter templates that we've got for GitHub Actions. You see, if you're doing like Node.js. So is Actions always there, or do you have to turn it on somehow? Uh, so Actions it is uh, it, it'll always be there on. Um, projects uh, that you create. Okay. Uh, it's a feature that's recently gone through the preview um, cycle, so um, some accounts might not have it activated just yet, Okay. but uh, it's rolling out pretty much to everyone as we're speaking. Okay, got it. Yeah, um, yeah and, and we can see a whole bunch of starter templates. They're similar to, as we would find in a, a lot of other of the platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, things that we've got that are popular, uh, we're just building like a Node.js application, or uh, we're trying to build like a package that we're publishing to the, the Node package repository. Mm -hmm. But then we've got integrations with like Azure Web Apps, or maybe we're building a Python application. Uh, a whole bunch of different things that we might be doing in here. Okay. Let's just have a quick look at maybe one of these. We'll grab the, uh, the Deploy Web App um, to, to Azure. And you can see that this is uh, what we've got as um, as a starting point. It's created a, uh, a place where a file will go in our GitHub repo. It's at .github as a folder, slash workflows, and then the name of the workflow that we want to run. So a workflow is what we call a GitHub action right. series of steps. So it's kind of similar to, and I want to spend the whole episode doing side by side, but this is kind of similar to, to Azure DevOps. You're building a YAML pipeline. Yep. Um, the pipeline is a set of actions or tasks that take place. Yep. Um, and you, you've got a list of them on the right, and you've got the YAML on the left. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so we've got um, the, the ones on the right-hand side are the ones out of the marketplace that mm -hmm. we could select and, and add in, just okay. like you would do with Azure uh, DevOps. Got and it. there is our, our YAML file that would be created mm -hmm. for this. Now, if, uh, if I was going to use this one, I would then just hit um, Save and Commit uh, up here, and okay. that will put it into my Git repo. But I want to show you how we can build one from scratch. So we can understand oh, a bit okay. more about cool. what's happening and the pieces that make up the GitHub Actions file. I'm going to just hit Cancel here, and we'll drop back. And I'm going to jump over to Visual Studio Code. Now that we're in Visual Studio Code, let's create our YAML file, like the, the starting point. So I'm going to do that by creating a new file. And here's a nifty little trick that I learned recently with Visual Studio Code, is that if I want to create a file in a particular folder, uh -huh. I can actually include that folder path while creating the file. So I can do dot GitHub slash workflows. Uh, nice. I did not know that. Slash, and we'll just, yeah, we'll just call this devops.yaml. Cool. 
sorry, YML. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it does support YML or YAML. I just prefer one less character. We'll pop that there. And that's, uh, we can see here in the, in the, the sidebar, it's created that folder um, automatically just because I put in the path. And cool. I think that's like a nifty little trick that yeah. it took me a long time to learn that that existed. Now, with a workflow, uh, we need to create a bunch of metadata around it, similar that we would have with, uh, with other YAML-based ones, such as like a name and what's going to make that trigger and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to copy and paste some code so we don't have to watch me type it all out, and we can talk about what's happening as okay. we're doing that. So here's one I've created earlier. We'll just grab the starting bit of it. So we I give it a name. assume the YAML you're using here is pretty similar to the YAML that you'd use in Azure DevOps, more or less? There's definitely some overlaps with it. Uh, there's some GitHub uh, nuances to it right. because of the slightly different approach to the way the actions work relative to the way tasks work right. in but Azure DevOps. But you could use it as a good starting point. Yeah, yeah. If you're familiar with doing the YAML um, pipelines with right. inside of Azure Pipelines, you'll see similarities okay. and be like, oh, yeah, okay, I understand some of the terminology and the concepts right. that we're bringing across. Okay, cool. Cool. So we've got a name, mm -hmm. a thing that will appear, because we could have multiple of these. Right? We might have some that are only happening on pull requests, so yep. that might be just doing like a test and not actually deploying anything, and this is the one that's going to deploy all the way through our production. So we can name them differently, just makes it easier when we look at it with inside of the uh, GitHub uh, website. And then we need to specify an event that this action is going to trigger on. So I'm going to say that this is going to trigger on pushes mm -hmm. to a branch named master. Right. Now if I had multiple branches, I could specify multiple different branches. Yep. I could specify ignore branches as well. So if I had a branch that I didn't want to get um, built using this particular pipeline, sorry, this particular workflow, mm -hmm. I could do it. Okay. Now with that done, we need to start setting up you know, the things that are going to ha actually happen. Because right. this is uh, this is useful, but it's not going to do anything yet for right. us. Like yeah. it, it, it will trigger, but it doesn't right. do anything. It says do something. Now the question is, what am I doing? Exactly. So I'll go grab some more of the stuff back from the, the one that I've written earlier. We'll just copy it all across, and we'll talk about it as we go through. Our first thing is that I've got jobs. Jobs are the things that I'm going to run. Mm -hmm. um, I, Inside of this, I can have um, multiple different jobs that can either be run in sequence or in parallel. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, I've only got one job. It's called build. But if I had maybe like a, a test uh, and I wanted to do deployment separately, or maybe I had unit tests and integration tests, I get a job named test and job named integration test and job named deployment. Uh, okay. But I just want to keep it simple for this, uh, this little example that we're looking at. And you can name your jobs by that first level indent here. We see on line nine mm -hmm. where it says build. Now, okay. so you can name that whatever I want. I just use build because it helps me know what it's for. And then we need to specify what kind of agent this is going to run on, or what what is the host for this. Right. Now, we can use Windows, Linux, mm -hmm. or Mac. Uh, because we're building a Node.js set of Azure Functions, I'm just going to use the Ubuntu latest okay. uh, agent, so a Linux agent. But if you're thinking about building an application that needed to, uh, you might, might want to run tests against multiple different ones. So you could build on Linux and on Windows and on Mac, all from the same pipeline, just by changing the runs on section of okay. our GitHub action. And finally, we have steps. What are we actually doing in this action? Well, oh, sorry, what actions are we actually going to do in this workflow? And we'll see each of these steps um, have a name. Uh, the first one here, checkout. So that's going to get our code out of our Git repo. Right. And then we specify a users. This is, uh, to use the Azure Pipelines analogy, the task that we're going to run at this step. Mm -hmm. So this checkout action is going to use an action that's been predefined called checkout. Right. And the syntax for this is a little bit different to what we have used if we've um, if we've been doing it with GitHub Action, uh, sorry, with Azure Pipelines. Oh, mm -hmm. I've got so <laughs> many DevOps tools that I'm working with that it it, it, it all blurs into one sometimes. <laughs> um, here we actually specify a GitHub repo yep. or a, a moniker to a GitHub repo that is what's existing in our marketplace. So there is actually a repo if we go GitHub.com/actions/checkout, and that's what we're using here. Ah, okay. And then with that, we can specify what tag or branch or even the SHA that we want to use for that particular action to run at this point in time. Now, it's, it's recommended that we don't just say like at latest or at master or something like that because every time someone pushes an update to that action, 
you're going to immediately use it yep. without necessarily realizing it. So we want to use something like a, a tagged version or uh, maybe a SHA, just so that we have confidence that our builds are repeatable based off of something that we know has been pinned previously. Mm -hmm. um, but we also don't need to use like, a checkout action. Like, if we had somewhere like our deploy to production environment, we're probably not needing the source code for that. We might be just downloading assets. Sure. So we can also drop some of these as we, uh, as we don't need them. Okay. The next one, because this is a Node.js set of Azure functions, I need to install Node on the machine. Right. And to do that, I grab a, di a different action. This one is set up Node. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't know what version of Node I might want, or I don't know what one the action would want to be used by default, we can provide parameters to it. And we do that with the with um, part of the YAML uh, statement, and then we can pass parameters. So node-version is the version of node to, um, to use here, and then I'm just doing 12.x. Does that impede repeatability, though? If Because you now know that every time you run this, you might get a different version of node. What's the trade-off between specifying it and leaving it open-ended like this? Well, so because I'm, I, I want to specify it, I want to ensure that repeatability, it's always going to use the same version of Node. But if maybe I was doing something that was, um, I, I was less concerned about the underlying host changes, okay. I wouldn't necessarily need to provide that, and it would just pick the latest form. Okay. Um, I would always encourage people to specify exact versions, whether it's .NET, Python, yeah. Java, etc. Because, as you said, you want repeatability. You right. don't want, that's, oh, it worked last that's week. All, that's, that's one of the promises of, of the DevOps practices is repeatability. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And, and we can even parameterize the way that this all works so mm -hmm. that uh, we might have a global environment variable that says right. this is the node version to run for the pipeline yeah. and stuff like that. And then we can do. Although maybe yeah. oh. repeatability, I mean, there's also you know, predictability, right? Because you don't yep. necessarily know when you deploy this if you're deploying it to something that, that has a latest version, then yeah. this would catch that. So it's kind of a trade-off. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah, uh, and then um, we we'll do an npm install. So mm -hmm. we can just run a script. And this is like a, a Pash script, or if I was on Windows, we could specify a PowerShell script, or if we're using cross-platform PowerShell, we could even do that in here. Mm -hmm. um, but then we'd pull in appropriate action. But it's got a couple of built-in things. Like it's got a, a built-in shell that it can run. So we just do like an npm install, and then the thing that we really want to do is deploy our code somewhere. Yes. And that's where we're going to start working with Azure. So this workload is doing the build and the deploy yep. in one. This is just one single step. So if yeah. any of these steps fail, it won't continue on. Like it might okay, not deploy right. to Azure. But I could. But I'm kind of used to over in Azure DevOps building my CI pipeline and then my CD pipeline. This is just one workload that does both. Just in this example, right. um, I could definitely split them out if okay. I wanted to. Um, so I could have completely separate workflows and trigger a release workflow after the build had completed, or I could even have them with inside of the same workflow file okay. and have uh, to where I've got like the build node specified on line nine, I could also specify another node somewhere which is release mm -hmm. uh, and have that dependent on the successful completion of build. Right. Um, but then, and then we would use assets to pass around uh, outputs from build and stuff like that. So okay. yeah, we can still okay. we can still do all that same sort of thing here. Mm -hmm. um, it's just to what level of complexity you want, because it will all happen through the same series of GitHub actions. Right. So yeah, we're, to, to log into Azure, uh, we use the Azure action. So mm -hmm. there's one existing. So we go github.com slash Azure slash login. Uh, that's our action. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and we can see the source code for that there as well. But we're going to need some credentials, right? Well, Presumably. <laughs> well, hopefully, like our GitHub can't just go, oh, I'm just going to deploy to a random uh, place with inside of Azure. I don't need any security for that. That doesn't sound like the best way to go about things. Nope. You have to supply that. Yeah. And we probably don't want to put our uh, like credentials directly with inside of this file because it's going into our repo. Right. So for that, we can use secret variables that are defined against our GitHub uh, project. Mm -hmm. So I've already done that because okay. I didn't want to publish my credentials to everyone. But I'll just show you how you would do that if you were doing it um, uh, for a project yourself. So we've got to jump back to our browser. And we'll come to the settings mm -hmm. of our GitHub project. And then we'll scroll down to Secrets in the menu here. And you'll see I've got one in there called Azure Credentials. Okay. So you store those in GitHub, and then it just reads from there. Yeah. So, right. 
So like you would have um, variables uh, and secret variables inside an Azure pipeline. Mm -hmm. We can have those here as well. Cool. Uh, so I can hit add a new secret, give it a name, yep. give it a value, and that will, uh, will all appear in there. And then that is made available to actions when they're run cool. using this uh, like dollars and double squiggly brackets. And is that stored at the repo level, at your account level? It's sort of the repo level. The repo level, okay. So if you've got multiple GitHub repos, you can have different secrets across each got of them. It. And okay. if for for some uh, or if for, for some reason like one of them got compromised, um, you could have just those credentials recycled, okay. and um, and it doesn't mean that you've given access to everything, right. all the keys of the castle. Yes. Okay. Cool. And the very last one that we've got here is that we are going to deploy our Azure function. Right. So again, we're grabbing our action, and we're probably familiar with this story yeah. by now. And GitHub yep. repo. Yep. Uh, I've pinned it. Um, this and the login I've pinned both at v1. So that's the uh, it's a tag that someone okay. has put on the the GitHub repo, uh, and the the code in there. So I'm confident that that's where that will be. And I have to provide it with a bit of information, which is the name of the uh, Azure function that I want to deploy to. So I've already created my Azure function here. And if I just hit refresh, we'll see that I haven't got anything deployed to that. And now let's commit this uh, GitHub action into our repository mm -hmm. and push it up. And fingers crossed, we're going to deploy our Trivia app straight from a Git push. And do you do you need to specify a trigger that this automatically runs on check-in? Or is that automatic? So that's what we've done at the very top of this file where we've got the on. Um, so that's the, so the, the event. On. Yeah, so, so on, okay. that, that's All our right. trigger. So that's your trigger. Yep. Got it. Yeah, there's a lot of different triggers. And I, I, um, we'll put the um, documentation for GitHub Actions in the show notes because okay. there are a lot of different events that we could also tie into, uh, things that are happening around your repository that are not just related to source code that you might want to perform GitHub Actions against. Okay. And then you could specify that it's not automatically triggered, right? It's yep. just manual. OK, cool. All right. So we'll commit this in, adding GitHub Actions. I love the fact that being familiar with how pipelines work in Azure DevOps, you now know a giant chunk of what you need to know to, to come over here and use these. Exactly. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. And presumably vice versa. Exactly. It means that, that if, like, as a company, you've started using um, GitHub a bit more right. and more, and you want to try out these tools that are built in, like you, said, yeah. you don't want to have to jump back and or forth. Or you wind up, you know, your your weekend job, you're working with a buddy who's got some code, and he says, oh, i got GitHub Actions going on here. It's like, OK, well, yep. I, already, I already know a lot about how this works. So you can just kind of slide in, learn some new stuff. Cool. Um, so right. I'm just pushing up those changes yep. to, to GitHub. We'll give that a minute while the magic of the internet works and the files all fly up mm -hmm. there. And uh, it said that uh, it just wants me to also do a, a git fe a fetch to make sure that I've got all updates um, from the remote repository okay. as well, because uh, I had been doing some, some work on another, another machine. Now, if we come back over here, hit GitHub Actions. There we go. So build and deploy. Yep. That was the name that we had in our YAML mm -hmm. file. And we'll see that it's already happened, and it was triggered on a push. Now, one thing that is different to a lot of other deployment tools that I've worked with is that this is related to that commit. So it's very easy to work out which commit triggered it. Right. So I can go back and go, ah, no, if, I, if I did have something fail, I can have a look back and go exactly the point in time. There it was, um, and it's all linked, all straight from the GitHub UI. I can easily yep. jump um, to things. So we can see there's the, the commit ID um, appearing with inside of the browser. I can click through, and I can see, ah, that was the change that happened right. that triggered this particular yep. pipeline. There's a whole history, et cetera, and you can figure out how many check-ins broke the build and all that. Yep. Now, if I jump over here, so uh, in the right hand, sorry, the left hand side, it's it's my left hand. Yes, it's everyone's left hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we can see the name of that uh, that job that we had okay, executing, cool. which is the build job. Uh, and because this has already been running for a few minutes while right. we're talking, uh, we'll see that the steps have already happened. There's a whole bunch of green checks. And we can, uh, we can expand some of these and say, set up node. And yep, we can this see is the what kind of ran. thing you look at the first couple times. You know, you see that it's doing all the things you'd expect it to do, and then you stop staring at it. Yeah. Like, OK, it's given us all green checks, so it means that everything must have awesome. been successful. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, our pipeline has all run completely. So if we jump back over to Azure, 
We give our functions a refresh. And now it's uh, checking because we should have actually deployed up the functions. Mm -hmm. We'll give it a moment. Fingers crossed, like I said, because it's the first time we've done deployment. And my experience has always told me that the first time you push <laughs> a, a new deployment file uh, and a new deployment pipeline, it will never work immediately. Ah, you always will have. Things so I'm optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's you gotta like, be. You have to be. You have to notice next to functions the spinning arrows, which tells you that it's not done yet. Yeah, that's what right. that's what we're waiting for. Right. Maybe we'll give it another refresh. Hopefully it hasn't timed out. Excellent, there hey, we go. Hey, there we go. So Sweet. there's our, our functions. They got mm -hmm. all deployed up because uh, we didn't have anything there before. We can come into here. We can grab the URL and um, and get the response. And just the same as we did mm -hmm. in the previous uh, show where we were pushing it straight from Visual Studio right. Code. But very, very cool. That's how we can do it entirely from GitHub Actions. And now every time I was to do an update to this, I could push a new yep. version, this workflow runs, it deploys, and it's all happened straight from Visual Studio Code and yep. our GitHub repo. So if you're new to DevOps and you decide you do want your CI CD pipeline slash workflows, or whatever you want to take advantage of this, you now have options. You can do it from GitHub, yep. you can do it from Azure DevOps, the code's in the same place. It, you know, you can kind of choose which one you prefer. If you're already doing Azure DevOps, you may decide you like this better, yep. move over. You may decide to run some in one place, some in another. It's an option. Exactly. And, and that's what it's about. It's about yeah. having options, yeah. making sure that you've got the right tools to empower you to build what you need to build, right. not just, oh, well, this is the only way that I can go down the path. Right. And it's and for people that are already in GitHub, it's nice to be able to do it from there as opposed to saying, okay, now what tool do I use to do my CI, CD? I can just do it straight from in here. Exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Glad to show you how to uh, set up a GitHub action from scratch. That was the best 20 minute overview of GitHub actions ever. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, might think about doing more of a deep dive on this. Uh, so we'll have to think about yep. that. Yeah, um, yeah. Because you guys let us know if that's something you'd want to see. Yeah, um, like I said, there's a lot more stuff yeah. that we can do with it, particularly when we try and integrate with other things that GitHub can do, right. whether you're working with your issues or projects, pull requests. Right. Uh, we can have all of those things yeah. trigger off different sets of workflows. Okay, cool. Thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. See ya.